Okay, in this video, I'm talking about uh, a titration of a weak base with a strong acid. And this is one point along the curve where before the equivalence point, I'll show you how you determine that um, to determine what the pH is. So we have 20 milliliters of a 0.25 molar pyridine solution. And here's what pyridine looks like. It's an organic base. Um, at every vertex is a carbon atom, and that carbon atom has enough hydrogens to fulfill its octet. So it's just a shorthand way of drawing um, organic structures. So here's pyridine, and throughout the course of the video, I'm going to refer to pyridine just as R3N. I'm just making it very, very generic. So this is a weak base. It's going to be an acid, um, I'm sorry, a proton acceptor. It's going to take protons away from acids because it's a base. And we're going to add to it 15 milliliters of strong acid, 0.1 molar HCl. Whenever you have a strong acid or strong base present in solution, it is going to be a reaction. There's no equilibrium here. The strong acid or the strong base tells you that it's going to be a reaction. Whenever you have a reaction that occurs, you need an IC final table. You want to talk about the stoichiometry of the reaction, not an equilibrium table. An IC final table relies on the number of moles of each thing coming together. So let's determine how many moles of pyridine we have. We have 20 milliliters of pyridine solution. There's 1,000 milliliters in a liter. And the pyridine solution is 0.25 molar, so that means for every one liter, there's 0.25 moles of pyridine. So our number of moles of pyridine, 0 0.005. Okay, let's determine how many moles of acid we have. We have 15 milliliters of the acid solution. Once again, there's 1,000 milliliters in a liter. And the molarity of the acid solution is 0.1. That means that for every one liter, there's 0 0.1 moles of HCl. So that means we have in total 0 0.0015 moles of HCl. Let's see what happens when we bring these two things together. Let's predict the products. R3N is a weak base. It's going to take the proton off of HCl, and it is a reaction, not an equilibrium. So after this takes the proton away, you form R3NH+. Plus. That's the conjugate acid of R3N, the conjugate acid of pyridine, and chloride ion is left over. Looking at the IC final table, again, it's in terms of moles. So the initial number of moles of our base is 0 0.005, and the initial number of moles of our acid is 0 0.0015. We have no initial uh, number of moles of conjugate acid R3NH, and honestly, we don't really care what's going on with the chloride. Chloride is an ion that does not affect the pH. It's kind of a spectator in the reaction. So I'm just going to kind of ignore what happens with chloride. Now, if we look at the change in this, we're really looking at what is the limiting reagent, which one is going to be in excess. So the one that we have less of is the limiting reagent. We have less HCl. So during the course of the reaction, we're going to use up 0.0015 moles of R3N, and all of the HCl is going to go away. We're going to gain that same amount of conjugate acid R3NH. And again, I don't really care what's going on with the chloride. Now, final. After the reaction has occurred, you have 0.0035 moles of R3N. You have no acid and you have 0.0015 moles of R3NH. Let's talk about the final molarity. Remember that molarity is moles per liter. So we have our number of moles of our different um, components here. We need to figure out how many liters of the solution we have. In total, we have 35 milliliters of the solution. 20 mils of our original a base, 15 mils of our added acid, so we have 35 milliliters of the solution in total. That means we have 0.035 liters of the solution. So in order to get the molarity, you divide both of these by 0.035, again, moles per liter. 
So our final concentration of base R3N is 0 0.1 molar, and our concentration of conjugate acid R3NH is 0 0.0429 molar. Now let's figure out what we have at this point. Do we have an acid? Do we have a base? Do we have a buffer? And the answer to this is we have a buffer. Buffers are formed when you have some base and a conjugate acid mixed together. So R3NH is the conjugate acid of weak base R3N. Since we have some of both, we have a buffer. Buffers can utilize the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation in which the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the base divided by the acid. I'm just putting generic base A minus, generic acid HA. All right, so we're ready to plug things in here, except we need a little bit more information. What is the pKa of the acid component, R3NH? Well, we don't really know yet. We have a Kb, we don't have the Ka. So it's important to remember that the Kw is equal to the Ka times the Kb for conjugate pairs. So since we know the Kb of the acid R3N, we know the Ka, we can calculate the Ka of conjugate acid R3NH. So 1 times 10 to the minus 14th is the Kw for water, equals that Ka that we're looking for, times Kb 1.7 times 10 to the minus 9th. So that means that our Ka is equal to 5.88 times 10 to the minus 6th. We're looking for the pKa. pKa is the negative log of the Ka. So the pKa, negative log, 5.88 times 10 to the minus 6th, equals 5.23. Now we can put things into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. The pH for this buffer solution is equal to 5.23 plus the log of the base component over the acid. Remember, R3N is the base, so it's going to be equal to 0 0.1 divided by HA is the acid, 0 0.0429. So solving that, you get that the pH of the solution is 